Since joining the Mets front office, like every general manager, Sandy Alderson has had to make his share of difficult decisions. So far, many of those decisions have paid off, as the second year GM has put the team in a position to be successful long term. This week, the man making the big decisions was kind enough to join us and give you, the fans, an idea of what it takes to manage a Major League Baseball organization. Sandy, thank you so much for inviting us into your office. Uh, I'd imagine you spend a lot of time here, so if you can, describe for us a typical day for you. Well, I try to spend as little time as possible in my office, although that's where one of my phones uh, resides. Uh, I like to be up walking around and uh, talking to people, whether it's in the clubhouse or elsewhere in the offices. So really it depends on uh, whether we're in the season, out of season, uh, we're at home, on the road. Quite often I travel on the road. So it really depends day to day what the mix of activities uh, might be. But this is home base, although, um, as I said, I try not to spend too much time here. <laughs> when you guys are looking at making a roster change, how does that process work, and, and who's the first person that you call? Well, roster uh, changes from within the organization involve a number of different people, including uh, our player development people, as well as Terry and the coaches and the administrative staff that we have here, because there are considerations uh, in, in, in a variety of different areas. There's, there's the... Uh, administrative question of roster spots and waivers and waiver claims and a whole host of things. So administratively it can be a little bit complicated. But certainly the player development people have to be involved in terms of whether the player's actually ready to be promoted. And then uh, of course there are discussions with Terry and, and the coaching staff. And in Terry's case, because he's known some of these players at the minor league level is particularly ben beneficial, but everybody gets involved. I don't know that a fan would really know that. You know, I think maybe they think that you just call all of the shots and then the other pieces are left to just accept the decision and actually it's a big team effort working yeah, together. Yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't work that way. I, there are, look, it's like, uh, I'd analogize it to calling balls and strikes, you know. Uh, an umpire calls 150 pitches in a game, but there are only about 10 of them that are really hard. The rest of them are pretty routine. So when you make decisions about the roster, most of them are pretty routine. It doesn't require any real analysis or having to make it you know, one of two very difficult choices. There are a few of those. But I try to get everybody involved and make sure that everybody has a chance to speak uh, on the subject before we make a decision. When you look at the relationship between a GM and a manager, how important in terms of success is it to have a cohesive relationship between the two? I think it's uh, really important. I don't know that it always uh, plays exists, out that way. Yeah, right. or that it's absolutely necessary. But I think that um, it, it's really important. And look, when you when you wake up in the morning and go to work, you want to wake up and think positively about going to work, and and uh, so it's a happy environment. Terry brings something different to the table. Than I do, but uh, it's really important that we. You know, work together and I respect his input and um, and his decision making responsibility in certain areas and he respects mine and we, we get along great. I have a fan question for you sure. from Wilfredo Santos from Bridgeport, Connecticut. He wants to know how happy are you with your club's work on and off the field? We're a very hard working team. Terry and the coaching staff work hard every day. They're here early and the players themselves work hard too. Just as an example our catchers uh, are here about noon every day working on a game plan for, for that night's game. But all of our players are interested in extra hitting, extra fielding practice, and that's part of being a young team. The staff knows that the development process continues, and the players, I think, know they've got a lot to learn and are working at it. You were the GM in Oakland and then CEO in San Diego. Now that you're a GM in New York, yeah. is there anything strikingly different? The striking difference is the amount of uh, interest there is in the Mets uh, and that's true of the fans as well as the media and I think that's a good thing I mean the media is well versed they understand the game uh, they're competitive fans are, are in many ways similar they're very knowledgeable uh, demanding uh, outspoken they're also very passionate yes and and they they love the guys on the team they also love to know who's coming up so maybe give us some names that those fans can get excited about well, one of the big names that has been discussed over the last uh, close to a year is Zach Wheeler, whom we acquired from the San Francisco Giants, and he's, he's one of our top prospects now. He's pitched very well 
at uh, Binghamton and Double A, and um, probably will mo be moving at some point uh, later this season. But he's been excellent. Matt Dendecker, center fielder, we just moved to Triple A. So I, I think our system is uh, is improving. We're starting to see uh, excellent performance from those guys who out have the tools as well. You know, you can have great tools and, and ability, but at some point it has to develop into skill. It has to develop into something that actually reflects performance on the field. Now, I know baseball takes up the majority of your time, but outside of it, what do you like to do? What does Sandy spend his uh, spare time doing? <laughs> now, the problem is, you know, in season, out of season, you're still thinking about right. uh, how to improve things. But uh, I like to exercise a little bit. Um, I play golf not very well. Uh, I read, but you know my attention span now is about two hours and forty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so time to uh, stop. <laughs> so uh, it's mostly newspapers. But I enjoy, of course, being with my family. And you practice law in San Francisco. Yes. Uh -huh. Before you got into all yes. of this mess, is there anything you miss about being a lawyer? Can you miss <laughs> anything about that profession? Um, I don't think there's a thing that I miss uh, about being a lawyer. I'm happy that I went to law school and practiced law because I think it does. Uh, provide uh, a set of skills and a, and a perspective on things uh, that um, I might not have otherwise. But when you went to Harvard Law and you walked in that first day of school, was there ever anything in your mind that thought, one day I'm going to be the general manager of the New York no, Mets or, or that not path? At all. It wasn't really even conceivable at that time because when I got involved in baseball, by and large, uh, everybody who was a general manager had either either played the game, which was fairly rare itself, or had grown up in the game. Before that time when I got involved, which was very fortuitous, I just happened to be working for uh, the Oakland A's on a, on a project. Um, no, I assumed I would be a lawyer or you know, shift into some other business, but never anticipated the, the sports business. And at one point you were a professor. Well, I taught, uh, I did teach uh, sports management at Berkeley, okay. which was great. I enjoyed that. I did it uh, for about a year and a half, um, undergraduates and, and graduate students. Who on this Mets team would have been a good student in your class? Well, Chris Young would have been oh, yeah? a good student, but I had a broad range of students. I had, I had athletes in the class. I had, uh, you know, the stat geeks. So uh, <laughs> uh, maybe Daniel Murphy would have been a good student. I don't know. <laughs>